Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Alfred Keter is a very brave man. And I can now understand why William Ruto never wanted Alfred Keter anywhere near parliament. Because let's face it, Alfred Keter won the UD nominations for Nandi Hills. But there was no way William Ruto was going to sign his certificate. Probably today, Alfred Keter would have been one of the thorns on William Ruto's flesh. Just a few weeks ago, in Kericho, Alfred Keter shocked the entire nation when he took Kenya Kwanzaa leaders head on. As a matter of fact, the entire crowd agreed with him. And immediately he finished, none of the Kenya Kwanzaa leaders were allowed to speak by the monarchs during that event. The cost of leading is on another level. First of all, you stood on a platform of bottom up. Because the idea of what you are alafu, you are not going to do it. Mungiongeza fuel, munatesa wala wa chini zaidi kuchina wala wa mbona. Nga mwa hivyo kwa wa chukia jibuwa testu, na mtu waje kututishi hako kidoga tiyo, eh, kwa kile mwote kuhu amuru serikali kwa mwa. Mami, joge, rubuchi, wiki tu. Ama sawa kwa simuku wapa, mkitoka kwa mtu wajeshe peto stations ya watu wa serikali, na hile ya opposition Magenge Jike manda sikete vege likono Anane Na muzi tuwanga chewa siki ni Eee Batu kumwabulo sakuwe kapsaswa na wale mimo Hele kini mebe na wale Again over the weekend Alfred Keter delivered another powerful speech And I'm 100% sure that that speech Has actually annoyed William Ruto Bishop Moema Pray for this country I know we have our son, but you know, for me, I don't give a damn whoever sits. If you don't fix economy, we chase you. That is me. If you don't touch on my life, I don't give a damn. Siji Bishop hapo Let us stop Alfred Keter at that point. But let me play for you this sad clip of a gentleman from Rift Valley. Just listen in to him very briefly before we proceed. Mimi nikiwa ndani ya kiricho kulingana na vile nimekuwa nikiambia Ruto ukweli ninaona masiku zangu zimekaribia sioni nikiendelea kutoboa sasa naomba watu wa media watu wa TikTok musikose kwa msiba yangu hii ndio picha itawekwa kwa sanduku What's your opinion about that statement by that gentleman. What's your opinion? Anyway, let us listen in to Alfred Keter destroying William Ruto because in this video, I want to reveal to you guys why that speech by Alfred Keter is actually not sitting well with William Samoy Arap Ruto. You know, the problem with this country is tribalism. You want to have your own and then they don't fix issues. Then you stick to your own. When your problems come to you and take it to the bank, come January, most children will not go to school because school fees has been hiked three times. This Christmas, very few people will eat Christmas. Alafu kiuliza wanaambi watu wei ni mkale nyo maza, wei ni mkale kitu gani? Ukilala jioni na watoto wako wamelala njani wei peke yako? It's not everyone. And all the petrol stations are in a what were opposition and government. If you are a sufferer, you are a sufferer. This government is worse than Uru Kenyatta government. In my own what I think. In my own view. Ama namnagani? Ama namnagani? This is a worse government. Because Uru left fuel at 140, it is 210. And you know the last time, about a week, CS Chirchir, Ambao ni mtoto wetu wa Bomet Akatangaza ati because of the war In Israel and Palestine The fuel is going up Up to 300 If it was not for the opposition And the members of press And the media houses To expose them Because many other countries were making news Saying 
that the fuel is coming down because of the same war. As as is going, as as is going up for the same war. This week they were increasing to 250. Alafu wanatutisha sana tiyo nini Siji wanatisha na Na mimi wajari wazijaribu Mimi unajua mkini ya galevi ya munielewe vizuri Mimi ya kuna mtu anaesa ni tisha takidogo Na siogopi wanajua Mbaka ruta wanajua Se tisho wangi na mtu yote Moe died and I let, it, let his soul rest in peace But he knows Alfred Ketere Uhuru Kenyatta knows That mimi ni wakusema ukweli Let me tell you something brief As I finish in this world, make a difference in people's lives when you're still living. Because this world is so sh too short to live in it. If you go out to 110 years, you're lucky. You're lucky. The entire cabinet of Moi in 1963, maybe one person. The whole parliament, maybe two people. A whole parliament in 63. Maybe two or one are children living. This world, even Jesus Christ, the people who crucified him are still not living. No, that's Alfred Keter. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you think Alfred Keter is going to survive if he continues like this? Of course, Alfred Keter is a brave man. But do you think he can secure his political future? by opposing or by saying the truth the way he's saying, especially the fact that he's from the Kalenjin nation. Maybe yes, maybe not. But I don't want to get into those for now. In this video, I want us to focus on why that statement by Alfred Keter is significant political speaking in the Republic of Kenya. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. And by the way, William Ruto delivered a very powerful speech in Germany. And uh, he received some standing ovation. Uh, William Ruto can normally give a very powerful speech. And... Uh, the fact that he can give that speech outside there and people give him standing ovation, we just wish he could do the same back here. Because back here, I don't think Kenyans are no longer taking William Ruto seriously for that matter. Ladies and gentlemen, why do I strongly believe that that statement by Alfred Keter is actually giving Kenya Kwanza serious political headache? Because let's face it, as we speak today, Kenya Kwanza is at their lowest moment. The state of the economy is just too high. Kenyans cannot afford. The promises they made to Kenyans are not working. Their lies have actually caught up with them. They can no longer lie to Kenyans. For example, on the issue of borrowing, they've even overborrowed more than Uru Kenyatta did. And the fact that they, are, they continue to blame Uru Kenyatta, Kenyans are now telling them, no, stop blaming Uru Kenyatta. And of course, the fact that now they are requesting Kenyans to give them more time. So, Kenya Kwanza is in a very tight corner, politically speaking. And of course, we have we have started witnessing scandals after scandals being unearthed in their government, which means already Raila Odinga or Uhuru Kenyatta or the opposition in general have managed now to penetrate their system. And therefore, they are going to be facing serious political trouble ahead. But why is this statement by Alfred Keter significant? Number one, it confirms one thing, that the ground is actually hostile for Kenya Kwanza, even in their own backyard. Remember, these guys started facing resistance in um, the mountain, where their leaders would uh, attend some events, they would be stopped from speaking. Remember how Kanini Kega was removed from the podium, Maina Njenga had to, to save him. There was this Simon Kingange guy who was stopped from addressing the resident in, in some function. Remember the Kameme FM roadshow? where the name of Ruto was uh, nothing people didn't want to hear, but when Uru Kenyatta's name was mentioned, people would, would really celebrate. Then it went like that. William Ruto went with, uh, with uh, Kimani Shungwa in Kikuyu town. People just ignored them. The other day they were in Kirinyaga. Mombasa, they were actually shouted down. And now we are talking of Rito Valley. People entertaining Alfred Keter and clapping for him while he's 
actually attacking William Ruto. That shows you that the ground is hostile. And when I talk of ground being hostile, I'm not talking of those guys shifting their political allegiance. You know, you can be angry with someone, but you still vote for him. I'm not saying that the, the Ridge Valley are, have left Ruto, no. But what I'm saying, which you also know, is that the ground is actually turning hostile for, for them. And that's why, even when they were in uh, Bomet the other day, people were not bothered. If you follow that event in Bomet, people were not bothered. And number two, it also confirms that Ridge Valley is also suffering. The residents there are also suffering in silence or in silence, just like the other, the other Kenya Kwanzaa strongholds like the Kikuyu Nation. And that's, that's why the heckling in Bomet was significant. That was a coded message to Ruto. I'm 100% sure that the people who are heckling Chirchir were not really heckling Chirchir. Why would you heckle uh, Davis Chirchir? Davis Chirchir has never contested for any seat. I mean, he's just a government employee. Why would you heckle him? The truth is, they just wanted to pass a message to Roto. And indeed, they did that perfectly well. So the truth is, Rito Valley are also confirming to Kenyans that they are also suffering just like the rest of the people. Number three, and this is what one thing that Kenya Kwanzaa will realize when it's already late. I've, said, I've stated that severally. That their policies are not pro-people. And you know why their policies are appearing in quotes not to be pro-people? It's because these guys campaigned on a platform of pro-people, a platform of the hustler, a, pro, a, a platform of Mama Mboga, a platform of Mutuachini. Then now, the people who are affected the most are those Watuachini. Today in this country, if you are lucky and you have 200 bob, and you have a family of three or four, you can't have a meal in the morning, I mean breakfast in the morning, uh, lunch, and dinner with that. It's not possible. It's not. So which means people are not even taking three course meal. Either one, or you, 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 you pretend to have water, hot water in the morning, then in the evening you figure out how, how you are going to survive with that. And that's the problem. The government is not pro people. So there's that disconnect between the people and this government. And that's why when you get someone who is anti-government speaking, then the people really embrace them very fast. And lastly, the impact of Kenya Kwanzaa policies are now being felt. These are the people who voted for them. They're feeling the impact. The finance bill. The impact is being felt right now. And for me, if I were Ruto, if I were William Ruto, I'll actually go back to the drawing board and figure out where the rain started beating Kenya Kwanzaa government. Because this is a government that won the presidency in quotes against all odds. And the expectations of their supporters were just up there. So you can't just bombard them. And you see, the problem is, the government is also not listening. If it were a, a listening government, for example, when Kenyans made noise about that ID being charged, you know, at least they listened. Of course, they, there's no way they could have avoided that, but at least they listened. If it's a matter of taxation, at least they ought to have listened to Kenyans. It's Kenyans who are going hungry. It's Kenyans who are being chased from jobs every day. So they need of that listening ear, which they are actually not prepared for. They're just bragging. Because the next day you see Kepchimba Murkomen wearing sneakers, 130,000. The next day you see him floating his nice house. You go to Twitter, Millicent Omanga just twerking there. And for example, I've just seen some statement by, some tweet by Millicent Omanga that shocked me. I don't know whether I can get it. You know, Kenyans are suffering. And instead of uh, being empathetic to them, let me just see that. Let me just see that Millicent Omanga. There's a post I think she made. Uh, I've been commented. Now, this is what he's saying. Uh, she's saying uh, the axis of plunderers are regrouping to scuttle the government's effort to clean the mess they left the country in after they left our economy in ICU. They are doing this because they don't want their dark secrets to be exposed. 
I think Kenyans have their time. You see, the problem is they think Kenyans are still fools that you have the responsibility of fixing the economy if it's bad. Then Kenyans see people like Melissa and Obanga being appointed to government. They are actually being driven by government vehicles, but their position has been declared unconstitutional. Some of them are occupying offices, unconstitutional offices. So I don't know what you think, but that's my take. What can you tell Alfred? Eter. Bye-bye.